Bone, Tom, and Huck, my little flu fenders. And welcome to I Like to Movie Movie, the podcast about movie movies. My name is Garrett. Oh, dude. Yeah, oh, sorry. Yeah, my name is Dan uh, Scully. That was fantastic, dude. Right? right? I thought of a movie that, that sounds right. like the movie, but is not the movie, but is also a great movie. Well, I we're think. like really flexing it, too. We've, we've done yeah. like bone movies. We did a yeah. hawk movie. Now we're yeah. doing some, some like relative homophones. Oh, I'm That's into right. It. Pretty good. Pretty good. How are you? We're joined by uh, uh, one Ron Gallo this evening. I, I, Ron, this is an interesting thing where normally, like on the show, we're not doing video. So I, Dan and I can just like riff for like 10 minutes before we find our guest like takes a nap and then we're like, oh yeah, uh, and uh, introducing. But you're on camera immediately. So <laughs> I always have hey. to introduce the guest right away and I never know how to do it. I'm always like, hi, Dan. Oh yeah, by the way, uh, hey, we're joined me. by Ron here. Gallo. Hey, what's, what's up, up, buddy? Hi. Welcome to the show. Hi. <laughs> I will say uh, that my favorite hi. part of the video element was that when you introduced Ron, you did the, you you presented with the hand to the crowd. Of course, yes. You were like, and we have Ron Gallo. Uh, I, have, I have a real problem with this. I've been guesting on like another show uh, that my friend does on Facebook every week. And I, they're really good at like looking into their cameras when they talk. But I am always just looking at them on my screen, and I'm yeah. talking the way I normally talk, which is like with gestures and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. always just like flailing at my screen, never looking at anyone. Exactly. I think I'm terrible at like the video element of this. We should see. I'm on an it. iPad, so my camera is over there. Whoa, weird. So like when I look at you guys, it looks like I'm looking away. But when yeah. I look at the camera, I can't see you guys. I know. So I just I'm yeah. just gonna exist in my own space and just let the audience yeah, figure yeah, that out. Yeah, you know. Yeah. They know what's up. Yeah, they, they yeah. Looking? All three of them are like totally. So you guys want to see something real cool? Yeah. yeah. I yeah. I got to get home for the first time in a while, and since my family had missed my birthday, we did like a little birthday celebration, Ooh. and they got me a gag gift that actually turned out to be the best gift I've gotten. I got this insane adult connect the dots book. Oh yeah. That nice. is uh, all like sci-fi and horror. And so, like, all of the puzzles have just hundreds of dots. Oh, Like, Jesus. hundreds and hundreds. And they're in little clusters. So you, like, do one to a hundred, then over here is, like... And so, like, let me show you a complete one. But they're so... Like, you can make mistakes. So, like, when they get complete, it doesn't matter. They're so intricate that yeah. it makes, a, like, a real cool thing. Like, wow. the only other one I did uh, was some, uh, some Wolfman I, I getting need... shot in the gut. I need you to know that you've got that video effect on where it's it blurs really everything other than your face. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> How do I turn that off? I don't remember. I, I know this happened once before when we were doing the show, and it was really funny that you immediately started trying to show us pictures, and I was like, I can't see that. Yes, perfect. You nailed it. Like, okay, yeah, I must man, have bumped it when I was great. fucking with you guys. So there's the book. Yes. Uh -huh. There it is. Lots of dots. We recap. Yeah. So we've got, you know, okay, when they come better. together, though, yes, they're, like, yes. really cool uh, – like this Wolfman getting shot yes. in his gut. Okay, I love but, this. Like, this is great. The, yeah, yeah. They're all like, uh, they're all like, you know. What's cool is, uh, when I was a kid, even before I was too smart for child's connect the dots, I would look at it and be like, well, that's a giraffe. I don't even <laughs> have to do it. But this has so many dots and they're so clouded and it's they're not all connected that I enter most of them only having a vague sense of what it'll be. So there's a level of wonder to it. And I gotta say, doing connect the dots. Even at 36, relaxing as shit. <laughs> so, coolest thing for my little show and tell. The, uh, uh, this is the lamest way to connect to that story, but the, I just got myself like over $200 in coins the other day. I like oh. collected all the coins I've had over years, but I bought those like little sleeves that you put coins into. Yeah. So, I like, I was, so I just like sat there while I was like watching uh, some TV the other day and was just like filling up those like little sleeves of coins. And when I brought them into the bank, the lady literally had to like go find the trays that you have to like put those into to like properly count them. I was like, when was the last time somebody brought these in? She was like, I, I, I've never had to do this. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Oh, she was like, it is relaxing though. Right. I was like, it is relaxing. I love yeah. this. She like pulls out the bank manual and it's just like, hang on. Yeah. I have to check procedure on this. Yeah. <laughs> that's uh, great. That's a, that's a good, 200 bucks that's that's like a is that a lot of years uh, yeah dude, yeah because i you know what it is i'm i'm an idiot that has just been putting them in like tupperware and then moving them from house to house as i move throughout the like rather than doing anything about it i just amass larger and larger tupperware containers full of change 
yeah. uh, which is heavy uh, and not fun to move. And I right, feel right. like an idiot every time. I'm like, yep, I'm just going to move this Tupperware full of quarters again. Same. So I uh, finally cashed them in, a couple hundred bucks Same. in the bank. That's account. kind of the, the, like, the, it's bittersweet with, with change because on the one hand, it's really hard to move. But on the other hand, it's like also really easy to save yeah, because yeah. it yeah. just kind of does the work itself because I don't want to carry around coins. Yeah, so I don't know. That was like probably a leprechaun. five to ten years worth of work, $200. Not too bad. Not bad. And by work, I mean filling my pockets after buying cigarettes. Yep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. you know what, though? Beautiful. You quit smoking, and now that's like you got a, you got a payment from it right there. Fuck yeah. yeah, I bought, I bought so, a house. Yeah, you smoking, bought a house, like, man. It's been like uh, a yeah. few years I bought a house. Yeah, you quit got your smoking, shit together. get house. That's what the smoking commercial should be. Yeah. Yeah. Have you guys noticed that they're back in like full swing? Anytime I'm watching YouTube, I get these really horrifying anti-smoking commercials. And they're like, they're scarier than ever. They look like mini horror movies. What's the most oh, horrifying God. one you've seen? Because I, I don't really watch YouTube. There's one where like they are, oh, because now it's like about vaping too, right? Like now they're trying to scare you about like vaping. So like one of them is like a guy like takes a hit off of his vape and then they show like the smoke turns into this like metal monster that like shreds his lungs up. And it's like, and it's like, yeah, va vaping is full of chemical, the same chemicals that are in like these different metals. So think about this every time you take a hit off your vape, and it's just like this fucking like transformer of like metal knives like going through this guy's lungs. <laughs> it's like, it's that terrifying. sounds fucking cool as hell. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I a I hate that this is back, but it's like these like really like overly dramatic like violent like anti smoking ads. But That's give me that the language though, man. Everyone's big now. Show me the ad where they're just like, you could buy a fucking house with all this cigarette money, you <laughs> dumb doofus. Dude, make that commercial. You write it, you sell it to Truth Campaign. Yeah. And then you're sitting like pretty that. on that charity money. Yeah, but by the end, they'd make me make the commercial where, like, the house is built of cigarettes, and I have to, like, light all the cigarettes, and they burn down to nothing. And they're like, this is what you inhale every time you buy one cigarette. It's pretty good. Yeah. I think that would work. It's effective. It's terrifying, <laughs> yeah. but it's but it's hopeful. It's yeah. like reverse hopeful. I don't know. Sorry that I got on a tangent about anti-smoking uh, advertisements. Well, I'm thinking you about the idea of packs of cigarettes in Europe, or I guess anywhere oh, outside of or, yeah, with the lungs. In, yeah. Canada, they have like pictures of like teeth and like gums, and yeah, yeah, it's horrible. It's crazy, yeah, yeah. And what I mean, would I, we put on pictures of other? Like, what pictures would we put on other dangerous products? I mean, Ooh. like, I, do we put dead people on the box? I, do, like, I don't have a gun. Do guns come in a box? I don't I know. Just, what, I, don't know what I was literally trying to think of a gun thing, but everything I started thinking of, I was like, that's not funny. It's just sad. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, you know, I don't know what's funny about lungs, but uh, that's true. It is. I guess there's really no other. Like, I guess no. if you like, 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 don't overdo it with ice cream yeah. and. You Every know, they just donuts you buy comes with a picture of like a foot that had to be removed. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, I don't Everything know. Everything else is like subtly bad. It's secret bad. They don't want yeah. you to kind of know. It's like uh... right. It's nutrition facts are the version of this, right? Yeah. Like like every or product over. does have that, but it's just fucking written in like a code that you can't understand. Exactly. Yeah. I kind of love the nutrition facts. Yeah. It's like I, I, you know, I don't know. I don't ever apply the math, but I do the math. Where I'm like, all right, so we got 210 of this. I'm yeah. sitting at about like 36, so I can get this and both, you know. And then I put it together, and then it's like, all right, I'm gonna eat 100 Doritos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's the. It doesn't do anything. It's like when I check the weather, and I always go, good to know. And then I go outside and go, I didn't do anything with the information of the weather. I just wore <laughs> what I was gonna wear and went for it. And it always yeah. happens that way. So yeah. That's true. Uh, so, Ron, you have new music out, which is mostly why I wanted you to come. Actually, I wanted you to come be on my show so I could hang out with you for a little while. I know. This uh, is the cats. <laughs> but uh, you have new music out called Easter Island, uh, which is that what? So this is actually what I wanted to talk to you about. We talked about this a little bit in private, but I, I, I feel like this is interesting. You did like a really weird, interesting release strategy for your new EP. So the EP is Easter Island, right? Like as you talk about this moving forward, will you just refer to this as the Easter Island EP? Man, it's been, I don't, I can't even wrap my head around sort of what it all is because yeah. I've been kind of winging the whole process. Yeah. Um, but what happens is, you know, the idea was I finished some songs. Uh, it's, 
it's pandemic. I mean, especially in the beginning, it was like heavy quarantine period. And in my mind, I was like, there's, there's a, a, a reason to delay this. Yeah. But I felt the exact opposite. I was like, you know, people are kind of at home. I think in my mind, my optimistic mind, like they need music more than ever. So like, I want to be a part of that. Like, let's move it up. I want to just start putting out a song every three weeks. Yeah. And the way that it releases is a song comes out a few weeks later, another song comes out, but then they're there together. Yes. And then each week it evolves into a new EP that will be titled the most recent single. Yeah. So there's another one coming out uh, this coming week. So then it'll change, but all the awesome. songs will still live there. Okay. And ultimately I, after all this like back and forth, trying to figure out like a strategy with this album, yeah, it's going to be a full album. It's going to yeah. come out February 12th of 2021. But yeah, it's going to live up there as like these evolving EPs. Track track, I so. love it. Like That's awesome, I, man. I've been like, because I've been, I think you, when did you put the first one out then? Like a, a month and a half ago now? Uh, June 10th. Wow. wow. Was that okay. long ago? Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Right. Wow. Yeah. Okay. It was a while ago. And so like, I remember listening man, to it. Man, what is time? I know. Ah! I know. But I, you, you know, you you have released a, a a bunch of EPs in the past, a bunch of singles and EPs, and, and yeah, so yeah. I'm I'm familiar with that strategy from you and tons of other musicians of just like you get either a single or an EP, and then like three months later, an album comes out. You know, that's usually exactly. from the same recording yeah. sessions. Sometimes some of the same tracks. Mm -hmm. uh, so like, I expect uh, that it was like two or three years ago that Weird Al finally broke free of his forever contract, so he yes. could transfer to a similar release schedule. Right. Uh, that's wild. Shit. Yeah. Um, but like, yeah. so I, I, when the first song came out, I was like, cool, uh, this song is great. And I'm excited for the album that will come. And then like another song came out but because of the way Spotify works. I like, you kind of see them as individual albums. Like you, I, yeah. I you can kind of, I see just kept getting stuff. Spotify emails that were like new music from artists you love. And I was like, Ron's releasing just a lot of albums. Yeah. <laughs> He's really taking advantage of quarantine. But I really liked it. I really liked it because like the way Spotify works is like, if I listen to one thing, now it does that thing where it automatically plays more stuff afterwards. Yeah. And because you had set it up that way, I kept getting to like, kind of like re-listen to those tracks, like very frequently kept like, if I finished the, the, when it became three songs, when I finished those three songs, it would just go to the two song version and play oh, me two of those nice. songs again. You know what I'm saying? Like okay. it would just like, and so I okay. kind of like that because it gave me an opportunity to like really listen to it a, a lot, which I do anyway with whenever there's new music I like. I well, I'm glad. I listen to it on repeat. I like it too, I guess, because it bombards people and that's like the yeah. only way to cut through these days. But I'm yeah. glad to hear that you like it because... I never hear anybody like say anything about how they perceive all that or if it works or if people are just like, what the fuck are you doing? I think um, it's cool. So I'm glad. And I'm excited. It's that, certainly like... been successful in making it visible to me. Oh, Cause nice. like I follow okay. a lot of artists on Spotify, but I got a lot of notifications. Uh, right. Like I guess you're in my algorithm. And so, and that's, you know what I, I don't think I would have like thought to seek it out, but it found me and that's then cool. that's rocked cool. me. Yeah. I'm very happy to hear that because you just you know I mean we're all like slaves to the algorithm now so it's, yeah I, yeah you just never know it's just like a you put something out and it just goes into like a black hole and you don't know how people are receiving it or if they are so. uh, well I people like who haven't received it should definitely check it out because it's yeah. all been real good I Let's really dig it. it I also Thank I think you. it's cool that like this it is like event listening in the way that like TV used to be event viewing right it's like a new episode comes out every week and you get excited yeah. for that new episode to come out every week. Okay. And uh, I've been having that experience again with like, I've been watching Lovecraft Country on uh, HBO. Ooh, how is that? I haven't watched that yet. It's pretty, I, I want it to be. creatures are nuts. They are. I want it to be great because it's like so close to great. Like the performances yeah. are amazing. I love the cast. And like, I don't know, on like a moment to moment basis, it's like generally exciting and good filmmaking and cool. And I overall like the concept, but the storytelling is really messy. It's like it, it, it's sometimes legitimately confusing where I'm just like, I don't actually understand what the stakes of this are right now because I don't really know what's happening. Oh, uh, no. You know, that sounds like Westworld. Yeah. And I don't want to get sucked up in another one of those. It's I got three it, seasons out of me. and I'm done. It feels a little bit like that. Like it, feel, it feels like a show that took the wrong lessons from that. You know what I mean? But it is good. Like I don't even want to like poop on it that much because it is good. It's it's a really cool concept that has great performances. 
And uh, yes, when it gets to, like creature shit, it's always like very cool and fun. It might be one of those shows, like a lot of HBO shows as well. You know, they pop onto the scene, they come out of the gate hot, and then as they settle into their long term rhythm, people can't figure it out, and then season two just fucking explodes. And like, I, it probably has the potential for that. I'm trying to stick with it because it's literally the pl- the premise of the show is just reclaiming Pulp Fiction for black audiences. Cool. They, it's just mm. every episode is like one episode is a zombie movie, the next episode is an Indiana Jones movie, the next episode is a haunted house movie. Oh, I didn't know that uh, like it hop genres like that. Okay. That's, yeah. So it's Ooh. like it's practically an anthology show, but it's not. It's the same characters. It's an ongoing story. You know what I mean? And so that's yeah. where it's like a little bit messy, where it's like they just rush through shit every episode because every episode is its own like genre of thing you know um but it is cool it's like it's very cool and fun but anyway it's it's like it comes out every week and i haven't watched a show that comes out every week in a decade (laughs) you know what i mean yeah i've only been the only time i've watched shows has been to binge things Uh, i'm currently watching the boys and they dropped the first three episodes last friday yeah. And now it's going to be released on a week by week basis, old school style. Yeah. And like a piece of me is excited because like when we're done here, I'm probably going to watch the new episode of the boys. I'm looking forward to it. But also at the same time, like I thought the whole reason we started this on demand stuff was to break. It. <laughs> you yeah. know, like I thought that was on demand was I demand it and yeah. I shall have it now. And yeah. um, find... I demand the rest of the season, but I'm only going to get it piecemeal. But do you find that you miss that experience sometimes? Because I do. I sometimes miss the experience of the event viewing thing. And that's like a little bit what I feel like I'm getting out of your album, Ron. It's like this, like, there's like this, this trickling drug that gets given to me every couple of weeks. You know what I mean? It's like, it's probably yeah. healthier. If you uh, yeah. related to a drug, it's probably healthier. Yeah. You know what's like, weird? Oh, I'm going to listen to the new Ron album. It's yeah. like, it's what's weird is, Dan, death, you, you just said the word piecemeal, and that's the mm-hmm. name of the album because of the way that it was made and the way that it comes out. So that's just funny mm-hmm. little, that's funny cool. little parallel. But Hello. yeah, little drugs. Yeah. Little, I, that's the way to do drugs, really. You do a whole yeah. lot, you know, things are going to happen. Uh, listen, but if you right. do little bits, you know, it's, it's, Genuinely, it's not me advocating drugs, YouTube audience. <laughs> you, do, you do what you feel safe doing. Uh, I have become a big fan of King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard over the last year. And they're a band that puts out tons of music. And as the kind of music fan I am, that's great because I tend to get a new album and listen to that album, like I was just saying, over and over and over for like a month and then not think about it for like five years, you know, mm-hmm. and then eventually come back to it and be like, oh, yeah, this is good. Uh, so I, ca- I like the release strategy because I actually this has probably extended my experience with your album. Uh, like a lot longer than it would have been had it dropped all at once. Fuck yeah. um, which I don't think that that would, I, and I don't think that that changes the, that doesn't even speak to the quality either way. Like I, you know, if it right. gave me a month, if it came out all at once and it gave me a month, that would be awesome. I would let, if it's right. an album that I'll listen to for a month, that rocks. Like I'm really into that. At, but if it's going to come out over four months and give me four months, and those four months are also good. Like, I fucking really dig that, too. I don't know. I think it's cool. I, I'm, like, really... I'm so it. glad to hear this, because I got kind of, like, battled on this whole idea, and so yeah. to hear that... Uh, now you're, like, reaffirming why I wanted to do it that way in the first place. I, I totally point. dig it. I, and I, when I, it's finally out, too, then it's going to be the thing of, like, oh, you got to check out this album. And I'll, I probably will end up listening I'm to I'm still going to get that month out of it at that point. Right, you know right, I, mean? I think what's been <laughs> fun so far is the songs are kind of all of a piece. You know, even yeah. the ones that sound different from one another, it does sound like an album. It feels like an album. So as it nice. grows, uh, you know, I look forward to seeing what the full experience of the front to back album is as oh, an yeah. entirety. Yeah, the best I albums actually, work that way, too. But I get the yeah. sense we're on the you're on the right track. That's true. You know, it's really interesting. I didn't even think about this, but uh, Ron, do you know the show? Uh, it's a podcast. It started as uh, "Are you Are you talking you two to me?" <laughs> <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> so it's know. it's Scott Ackerman and Adam Scott. Scott Ackerman okay. is like a comedian. Adam Scott's an actor, mm-hmm. uh, yep. and they so their first show they went through U 2s uh, discography. It's mostly a comedy show. They spend like an hour just bullshitting, Jesus. and then spend like twenty five minutes actually talking about the band. And then just make a bunch of jokes about the, you know, like every every episode yeah. is like, we got to run down the names of all the members of the band. <laughs> like, they, you know, like dumb shit like that. But anyway, yeah. uh, they talk a lot about sequencing on that show. They've eventually, you know, so now they've gone on to do R.E.M. Uh, they're talk- oh, okay. They they did an episode with Huey Lewis. They actually had Huey Lewis on the show to talk about his music. Oh, they so had anyway, Huey Lewis on? I haven't listened to that show in a while, man. 
It's mm. a great episode. I, I highly recommend. Love Huey Lewis. He is awesome. He's losing his hearing. It's like oh, a re- no. it's actually a really uh-huh. sad episode where he talks about losing his hearing. But it's he's awesome. He's so cool. Uh, anyway, I imagine about- he gives like the firmest, warmest ham- handshake. <laughs> yeah, I just I feel that about Huey Lewis. He, if I can, he has a new album that came out within the last year, and it's fucking stellar. Highly That's recommend. Right. Uh, yeah. But I, they talk about sequencing a lot on the al- on their show. And it has gotten me thinking about sequencing of albums a lot more than I ever really have in my life. Um, and one of the things that has been interesting about the release strategy is you are, I'm having to follow along with the crafting of this album, right? Like as opposed to me getting this whole thing and being able to talk about the craft of the sequencing and what I think of that or whatever, I'm actually on this like journey with that as new tracks get added. Cause yeah. I, also, I don't think you've been adding them in order, right? They have bounced around. Well, they're going to drop in order that the album's going to be. So, okay, they are. yeah, okay. you could get used to a sequence and then a song will pop up in between two songs. You're like, oh, and then the end, it'll be yeah, it'll fall right. into the final. So, yeah, that's I'm, I'm very interested in that. I think that's kind of a cool experience. Like, I, I think probably nice, for yeah. I don't know if you have to be that maybe you have to be this nerdy about music and albums to care about that. But I, I actually think that's a pretty fun, like, uh, audio puzzle. it makes it experiential yeah. i think a lot of that's lost with the way that music is consumed now um you know we just we just lose certain things as the medium changes and it's just the nature of the beast it's neither good nor bad sure. but uh you know i i still buy records sometimes just because it's fun to, to do it you know and to yeah, have yeah. it and all that but yeah there's there's a language that that uh isn't always there now that that ron you're kind of fucking with and having fun with i think that's cool trying to it's I think it's I, yeah, I think like I think you're right. I think it's really a rarity for people to like even pay attention or give a shit about that stuff. So it's it's awesome. I'm, Cause yeah, I think most people are like uh, one song's gonna pop into their Discover Weekly, and that's gonna be their whole image of a band or an artist for forever. I'm totally like, guilty of that. I literally I have a whole <laughs> list of like because I always add people to my favorites or whatever when yeah, any yeah. song comes up that I like. And I do that so that I'm like, well, later I'll go back to my favorites list and I'll investigate this band. I never fucking do. I just <laughs> add that one song to a yeah. playlist and I listen to that one song. I'm always like, this song is good. Yeah. And that's what I we fight like, against. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like I'm just renting all music because of Spotify. Because yeah. like for the most part, what I do, yeah. I have this one playlist that's like my all time favorite songs. And it's every song that I ever go like. Ooh, that's that's real fun. Yeah, and it's yeah, a real yeah. weird playlist. And things get added to it all the time. So it's just like seven hours long. And that's just on shuffle. And I feel like I'm just paying a premium every month to listen to the shuffle mm. of my favorites. <laughs> and honestly, it's worth it. It's very nice. Yeah, I mean, man. It's it's like a library. I don't know. I know. It's w- with you everywhere all the time. It's and I gotta say, I you know, uh for this world of algorithms, and I know there's a lot of uh different ways that people feel about that, I like Spotify's algorithm, it's one of the only services where I think the algorithm is constantly giving me new things that are actually interesting to me that I do end up I trust the recommendations. Amen. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It's one of the few that I like. Uh, I feel like I discovered tons of good stuff that way. I also, I mean, one of the things that has been fun is being a friend of yours for so long, Ron, and eventually you popping up in lists of other things that I'm interested. You know, I'll be like, "Um, I'm, I'm getting really into like, whatever early 2000s psychedelic bands that like were i don't know popular on college radio stations or something you know what i mean like yeah, yeah. some very specific niche thing and then it's like a bunch of ron songs like pop up in that playlist somewhere and i'm like ah! this is dope. yeah fuck yeah that's yeah. that's why uh, it. it's pretty fun uh but i do want to talk about movies this is our movie podcast uh yes. which i have not been watching a ton of because what i've been trying to do dan and i think this will interest both of you is i've been re-watching twin peaks oh uh, <laughs> yeah in an yeah. effort to finally watch the return, I've yeah. actually never even seen Firewalk with me. Oh, so, dude, yeah. we Firewalk just... with me might be David Lynch's best movie. That's Don't quote me on it yet, me. but every time I watch it, I go, even though this is derivative of a show, this is a fucking masterwork. Yeah. It's it's actually the, there's a there's a Battle of Mente song on my all time faves list that is uh, exclusive yeah. to Firewalk with me. Ron, you're you look like you're familiar with it. Yeah, it's I, well, I actually have not seen Firewalk with me. I've seen all of Twin Peaks, but I sk- I, I haven't done it yet. Well, I can't wait I for you to... both to see it so I can yeah. tell I you all I, about it. I think I might watch it after this show because we just finished season two of Twin Peaks last night, which I had uh, never yeah. seen all of. I have, I've seen season one like four times, 
uh, and season two, I just never got through. Um, and it was honestly tough to get through. I yeah, the middle, yeah. like the Zane era, the Billy yeah. Zane era of season two is difficult. It I, once once James is fucking like at some rich lady's house where she's like got some weird thing going on with her brother and husband, and he's just like repairing cars to have a bed to sleep in. Yeah, yeah. like that whole part of that show is like. All of a sudden, everybody's yeah, spinning. Yeah. It really is like so. Ju- and you know what's weird about it is that, like, part of what is so enjoyable about that show is that it's a self aware soap opera that is just trying to be as, like, active, is trying to be weird enough that it's interesting, if that makes mm-hmm. sense. And it eventually just becomes the kind of soap opera that they sort of make fun of throughout the first season with that soap opera that's running in the background. It well, season three, show. The Return, absolutely, like, uh, reclaims it as hard as something can be reclaimed. I love it. Because it's so excited strange. I just picked up the two like Twin Peaks books, like the coffee table books. The, the, the dossier, uh, the secret history of of Twin Peaks. They're both by Mark Frost. Yeah. And the uh, the final dossier, mm-hmm. and they're supposed to be between season two and three, and then after season three. Oh. And because of quarantine giving me time, and I'm like catching up on TV shows. I think I might follow in your footsteps and do a Twin Peaks rewatch and integrate yeah. the books into it just That's because, cool. you know, Dude, I love it. And, uh, so Ron, you've seen the show and you've seen the return like yes. season three. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I'm so excited to watch the return. It's like Tori and I spent the last week just like grinding through season two being like, let's just watch another <laughs> one of these fucking episodes. <laughs> We've got to get to the return. Like, uh, so I'm like very hyped because it really isn't until really the very last episode of the show that it gets good again. Which yeah. directs that finale and clearly is like, all right, here's the three plot lines that I was most invested in. I'm going to wrap those up. Uh, and then I'm just doing 30 minutes of my own shit and you can all enjoy it. There's I like, like how his, his character leaves and comes back with him. Yes. Yep. He's also a big part in season three as well. Good. good. Gordon yeah. Cole is probably like my favorite thing about it. He has this line when he first mm-hmm. shows up that Tori and I could not stop laughing at. He wa- it's like he it's like he enters the show. He like walks into the frame and he introduces himself as Deputy Director Gordon Cole. Now that's a mouthful, but I can't hear myself anyway. <laughs> I love him. Oh, oh I love God. him so. It made me laugh so fucking hard. It, yeah, also... I would like to rewatch that because I watched it for the first time about five years ago yeah. and like really like did the binge. So yeah. I think there's probably a lot of nuances that I don't know. But since then, I've probably seen Firewalk with me five times. Oh, uh, I'm so excited yeah. oh, it. Man, it's you. You are going to love it. Yeah. It is unbelievable. Well, you know, you know what I was very impressed by watching because, like I said, I've seen season one like a bunch of times, and I really like season one a lot. The whole show is so much funnier than I remember. Like, Mm -hmm. that's not necessarily what I think of when I think of Twin Peaks. But it is so fucking funny. Like, even even when it gets really fucking boring, there are always some, like, really good, like, bits of comedy in every episode. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's partially because the actors are all, like, I think, like, just tremendous. Like, pretty much everybody on the show. It's odd to have that many people get it. And I think that's why David Lynch so often repeats use of actors and actresses. And it's because the few people who get it, like, really get it. And he's, like, he's out there, man. So it's, like, (laughs) for them to be able to get it and get that humor is, you know, it's a specific thing. And they all seem to get it. For sure. It's a world. It's a whole world in itself. Uh, I also like w- watching it now, uh, you know, all these years later and becoming like more familiar with Lynch and his kind of worldview as he's gone on to give us weather reports from his home <laughs> and stuff. Would be, it's very clear that like Twin Peaks is like someone decided to give David Lynch a TV show, which is at face value an insane idea right off yeah. the bat. And he just used that money to just put his worldview on TV. Like, oh, Dale, you are going to love the return, baby. You are going to love the return. Dale Cooper is, it is just crazy. a character that just says David Lynch things to other people. He yeah. just, like, says things that David Lynch is thinking to the world. Right. That's all that watch for. Uh, John Carroll Lynch, the guy who played uh, Zodiac, uh, the supposed Zodiac and Zodiac. Uh, Drew Carey's a, brother. Yes, Drew Carey's uh, brother. Yeah. Uh, uh, what was his name? 
like Greg Carey or something. I forget. Uh, but I actually interviewed him when he made this movie called Lucky. And yeah, Lucky was, uh, was one of the final performances from uh, Harry, Dean Stanton. Harry Dean Stanton. And David Lynch is in it. <laughs> and David Lynch has a turtle named Harry. I think it's either Harry Truman or Ulysses S. Grant. I forget. Uh, it's a tortoise. And there's a part where, and like the tortoise has just wandered into his life and also wanders out of his life at one point. And it's because tortoises are bigger than us. And David Lynch gives this amazing speech where he's talking about like how, you know, that that tortoise existed before us and it will exist after us. And you're like, if there's one thing you must understand, it's that there are things that are bigger than us. And one of those things is tortoises. And <laughs> he gives this, uh, it's incredible. And if you are digging the uh, humor of Twin Peaks, this movie has a lot of it. And if you need a break from Twin Peaks, yeah. I recommend Lucky. And it's just a tremendous movie, you know, outside of that. I'd like to see that, yeah. It's good, man. It's real Have good. either of you seen The Straight Story? Oh, yeah. I have not. It's on Disney yeah. Plus, though, so I would like to. It is crazy that David Lynch directed a movie for Walt Disney. Mm -hmm. uh, and it is, like, a very charming... It's the most straightforward thing I think he's ever done. It's, it's so just, heartwarming. Yeah. It, I, it's so, yeah. Very That's the charming. lawnmower one, right? Yep. Yeah, about yeah. a man who decides to ride his lawnmower a very long distance because there's like a important uh, event that he needs to attend. Basically, right? There's right. like something happens and he needs his to get brother. Something. His I think it's his brother's dying that he hasn't talked to in a really long right. time. Right. Yeah, oh, it's, it's beautiful. so melancholy and warm. Yeah, Sweet. but it's I feel like that's another. I can. I, I I will have to watch that soon because I do have access to Disney Plus. And I keep seeing it on there, and I go, yeah, but this is just, like, normal Lynch. I want weird Lynch. But that yeah. does sound like something that Lynch can make into something special. So that yeah, sounds very yeah. cool. It's yeah. genuinely delightful. It's a, it, it, it's a real good movie. <laughs> I think that's what I like about Twin Peaks, is that at the end of the day, it's a pretty delightful show. Yeah. I, like, honestly... It's a movie that prioritizes politeness. Yeah. Um, you know, like it's it, it prioritizes just being firm and good and best face forward. I, I like that. Yeah. Um, I, I also, you know, there's um, the so there's so many things in the show that because I never finished it myself, I've seen in memes over the years. You know what I mean? And so it turns out I had seen the final shot of season two many times, which is, is Dale uh, banging his head against the mirror and, and seeing, yeah. uh, spoiler alert for the end of season two of Twin Peaks, but, uh, you know, uh, D Dale seeing uh, uh, Bob uh, in the mirror. And so I guess we're to understand that Bob has taken over Dale Cooper, right, at the end of the show. And so I've seen that meme many times before, but never in context of the show. And I couldn't believe it was like the final frame of, because ultimately, like, the show gets canceled after this. And so it's like, it's the final frame of Twin Peaks is just like Dale being taken over by Bob and going crazy. And it's like, for what that show is for every moment leading up to that, it is fucking wild that that's how that show ends. Oh, you know what I mean? And just wait until you meet Dougie. Oh, you know? oh my, my goodness. Favorite when you thing. meet Dougie, it's going to blow your mind. My uh -huh. favorite. My yeah. favorite. Last year for Halloween, I couldn't find it. I was looking for a green sport coat so I could be Dougie. This is another so, thing I've seen tons of memes of, and I've I can't wait till you know the context. So, yeah. It's oh, it's unbelievable. Yeah, unbelievable. It is. Maybe I'll watch the straight. I was going to start watching all of the Bond movies. That was my next project in anticipation of the new one. But uh, maybe I'll watch the straight story and just yeah, get that one out of the way. I mean, I can't imagine it's longer than 87 minutes. Yeah, that's true. But I don't know, though. It's directed by David Lynch. Like, that's I just true. watched Inland Empire for the first time. That movie is, How is three that? whole ass hours long. Yeah. Um, it's not Wouldn't my it. favorite Lynch movie. I, like, there's a lot that I really liked about it. I think yeah. that it's very good, but it is very, very, very for hardcore David Lynch fans. Yeah. And even as someone who's a pretty big David Lynch fan, there was points in that where I was just like, all right, I get it. It's weird. Like I just, <laughs> yeah. I was done. Yeah. But you know, it's like if they like multiplied uh, like a Mulholland Drive into <laughs> Mulholland Drive and Lost Highway got mixed together, and then I dropped them both on a pile of books. I don't, I don't know. It was just, it's weird. But there's a lot of really good stuff in it, and Laura Dern, of course, is like exceptional. It is, well, it is her movie. It's like her going mad, freak out movie. It's it's good. And it probably has the funniest moment uh, I, I think I've ever seen Lynch do 
in which oh, who plays the director? Fuck. Um, there's there's like a director of a movie, and he's oh, it's uh, Jeremy Irons, and mm. he's trying to talk to a lighting guy who's off camera, and the lighting guy off camera is clearly voiced by David Lynch. And so it's him just giving directions and that guy not understanding the directions. Uh, it's fantastic. And it's very much what you're talking about, like in the style of the humor of Twin Peaks. Yeah. But it's not, you know, I wouldn't say open up with it. I, you know, I had to yeah. devote a day to it. It was, it, just watch Southland Tales instead. It's so much better. <laughs> uh, well, I, I, like, the reason I'm a fan of David Lynch is because uh, uh, you uh, showed me Mulholland Drive in college, Ron. I remember that was like a big... Oh, right on movie for you and uh i think i had maybe seen eraserhead before that but uh, you know mm. eraserhead devoid of any other context uh at you know 19 years old i just didn't know what to do with it um oh yeah uh but mahal and drive i fucking loved i think i watched that on a tv in someone's basement view or something and uh it was uh man I, and i've seen so many like i saw wild at heart for the first time this year have you guys seen that, that was one? cool uh, yeah, I watched that because we were going to do an episode, and then it oh, that's got, right. uh, yeah. yeah. That's the one with uh, Nick Cage and Laura Dern. Uh, yeah. I don't know if I've seen that one. It's like Nick Cage is basically doing an Elvis impression for a whole movie, uh, while, like, psychotically, like, beating people to death that breathe on Laura Dern. Uh, I it, haven't seen it. Okay. It's real good. It, it's it is good, like, man. Real, real good. Yeah. Uh, and Dern is like so good in it. Cage is fucking great in it. Um, but it is, you know, uh, like Mulholland Drive, it's like, it's so distinctly David Lynch. It's one of those movies where every time I see a David Lynch movie, I'm like, how is it that this guy is considered one of our great filmmakers? Like, I, like, I, lo I love that he is, but how did that happen? Like, each of these lucky. movies is so idiosyncratic and weird. And doesn't feel like it could get even made today. You know what I mean? Like it, it it's. Yeah, I think I what it comes it. down to is the tone. His movies make you feel good to watch, and yeah. people respond to that. Yeah. They appreciate the imagination and his command of like feeling. Right. And so right. even when something's too weird, I think a lot of people are so hypnotized by his artistry. Yeah. Um, that and, and it probably are, just like, like people are drawn to things that they can't understand sometimes too. Like mm -hmm. they. A lot of people watch it and they're probably like, I have no idea what I just watched. But like, that's, that's the thing they can go say to somebody like, I watched the, this movie by David Lynch, Mahon Drive. It's like, it's fucking crazy. I have no idea what it means. <laughs> it's all, and the thing is with him, that's probably so funny is a lot of it could be totally meaningless, but appear to have such a deeper meaning, but it yeah. may not. And that's what yeah. you never know what that line is. It's probably what intrigues. Definitely. And I think people see it and go, I know that there's something being said or it has some meaning here. And yeah. uh, because of that, they want to engage with it. And it is fun and entertaining. It is fun. He, he does have fun. But uh, yeah, I've often said that if Lynch just suddenly was like, hey, listen, everybody, none of it meant anything. It was literally just me being random. It wouldn't break my heart because the movies yeah. would still be just as good. And I can't yeah, explain yeah. what that is. But if he was yeah. like, oh, no, Mulholland Drive isn't deep. I'm not saying anything. I'm just throwing shit around and playing with film. Right. And so, like, it's still kind of a masterpiece. <laughs> you know, like, if he was trolling us, he's, it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. It, it, yeah, it's so interesting. And you know what it is, though, too? I feel like the more of his stuff that I see, and maybe even the older I get, the funnier his stuff is to me. And I do wonder, like, the more of his stuff that I watch, the more I realize, like, I think stuff that I used to think, like, boy, this is so cryptic. Now I'm like, I think this man just thinks this is funny. Like, he just thinks this weird thing that he did is, like, a funny thing to do. You should, yeah. you might not respond well to it because a lot of people are not liking it, but a lot of people are liking it. But I'm thinking of ending things. Oh, yeah. It is oh, almost know. impenetrable by the end. Yeah. But I think it's like one of the funniest movies that's come out this year. It, mm. it is, it's Charlie Kaufman. So, yeah. you know, it's funny in a way that is unique to him, but it takes a turn at the end. And the more I read about it and the more that I learn about the references being made the more textured it becomes mm. and i will admit that reading the book that it's based on really helped mm. but i still think the movie ended up better um i don't know i highly recommend it but the the it's impenetrable nature is done in such a fun way that uh as you said about lynch Garrett, like yeah 10 years ago i'd have been like this is ridiculous and pretentious yeah. but now as an adult i go oh this is fucking hilarious 
yes. Like yeah, yeah. Uh, so I highly recommend that. That's something I watched recently. That if you're on that wavelength, it might be the time. I, yeah, and it's got I, Jesse Plemons and Jesse Buckley, two of my favorites. Plemons is the reason I want to watch that more than anything else, actually. And Tony Collette. Oh yes, also her. Uh, she's crazy in it. David Thewlis is in it. Um, oh, he's great. He's I just great, like, and he's awesome in it. Ever since seeing Plemons in Game Night, have you seen Game Night, Ron? I have not. No. Game Night's, <laughs> Game like, Night's a, like legit great. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a studio comedy that came out. I don't know, like four or five years ago, maybe. That stars um, uh, Jason Bateman and uh, oh gosh, what's her name? She's Rachel so McAdams. Yeah, Rachel McAdams. And it, she's it, it, secretly it, funnier than we all give her credit for. Yes, she's so she's good. real funny. Yeah, she's yeah. really really funny in that movie. And it's like it's a studio comedy that shouldn't be good, but is. It's like it's it's really it's got pretty. some really like Ace directing in it too. Yeah, it's like really pretty funny. But Jesse Plemons plays a an extremely dry police officer in it that lives next door to this group of people that like competitively play board games every week and never invite him because he's the very dry police officer that lives next to He's no fun to be around, but he clearly wants to be invited to these game nights. And he just has a series of scenes where he, in a police he, uniform, he takes everything personally too. Okay. Yes. And like in a, heavy, heavily in a police so. uniform, holding a tiny poodle and petting it, <laughs> just saying like, Oh, so you guys are you're playing games again. Tonight, with all your friends. Okay. Okay. <laughs> You're playing games with them. Okay. It is the driest, like, funniest thing I've seen in a movie in, like, a really long time. And so when I saw he was going to be in the Kaufman movie, I was like, this actually seems like a fuck. This is like a Nick Cage cast. This is, like, this is a really interesting actor. It's weird. do, like, a weird, funny, you know what I mean? Like, I, I'm, I'm interested he's, in he's that. He's, like, worked with everybody now. I know. Plums has worked with that. He's like Adam Driver, who just showed up on the scene and worked with yes. everybody. Uh, but a cool thing about Plemons is as he gets older and ages, he's uh, he's fading away from from looking like like Bobo Matt Damon, and he's starting to turn into Bobo Jim Gaffigan. <laughs> like he looks as if Jim Gaffigan and Matt Damon got into the machine from the fly, and <laughs> Plemons came out. But his performance in this movie is as if Matt Damon and Jim Gaffigan had like a really morose child so it's like i don't know I, the more i think about it the more i love it but uh when i first came out of it i was a little cold um yeah. i think that's by design but it i don't know i i think that you'll be happy you watched it whether you like it or not i'll have to check it out yeah uh, it's worth it's worth watching it's cool i got a good list going now yes yeah. have you uh, watched anything around yeah what you got buddy I've been, been watching cutting tracks, <laughs> cutting tracks, Cut breaking it up. Jams. I binge watching the Great British Baking Show. That's what I was doing. <laughs> Hell oh, yeah! If I'm being honest, that's that's the extent of it. Um, <laughs> that's awesome though. Love it so much. It's been great. Um, and then what else happens? Well, Sometimes, well, like to fall asleep, Kiata goes back and like replays like the same '90s rom coms just to kind of like something she's seen a thousand times just to fall asleep to it. Yeah, but the, any any of them stand out? Yeah, have you like fallen uh, in love with any of those movies? I love all of them. I mean, uh, How to Lose a Guy in Ten Days. Uh, um, made is in Serendipity Manhattan. on there? Serendipity is in there. I think we watched that at least three times. I love that. <laughs> movie. Oh, I mean, I saw that they, in theaters. They all start to blend together at some point. In, yeah. Oh, yeah. They're all the same movie. Yeah, They are all the same movie. But I love it. I mean, it, this time has been so much about what's easy, I think. Yeah. Um, uplifting, nostalgic. And the, the baking show is just like, you can't. <laughs> it's just... Dude, I've watched like Detective Pikachu like four times since we were watching oh, It's so good. Because it is so comforting and joyous to me. We did a... Yeah. Uh... In my household, whenever me and Jenna eat dinner, we just watch old Jeopardies on Hulu and Netflix. And that's the most relaxing thing. The watching Jeopardy and connecting some fucking dots. Man. That sounds great. Oh, that's shit. Life. You know what? I go, okay, here we go. Two shows. Have yeah. either of you watched Rami on Hulu? No. What's Rami? Oh, uh, okay. Amazing show. Um, it's, it's on Hulu. It's basically about... Um, it, there's comedy to it, but there's yeah. also a lot of like really heavy social commentary from um, he's basically this Muslim kid, Muslim family living in New Jersey and sort of like all a lot of commentary around like 
how they're perceived in American culture, how they perceive American culture. But it's really like, um, I don't know, it, it kind of gives me like a Louis vibe in a way where oh, it, cool. it's the comedy is there, but it's dark and it's like really strong comedy. Amazing show. And also, have either of you watched Dave? No, no I've heard I keep so many things like about Dave. I oh, hear it's okay. like legitimately funny. Like one of the fun- yeah. I think it's one of my favorite shows I've ever seen. It's yeah. right on. These it's both brilliant. sound good. Yeah. I think you they're sold incredible. me on Rami. Yeah, they're both almost on the same. They're different, but on the same level for me. Like, and I was kind of watching them at the same time. So good. So, nice. so smart. I, yeah. I have heard, I've had multiple people tell me that Dave is like, the, you know, uh, you know how it's like, you know how Compi has that weird effect of like, it only lasts for a couple of years. And then when you go back to it, it's like, oh, this isn't as funny as I remember it being. You know what I mean? Like yeah, most, yeah. most things lose their kind of, and so like comedy always has to be like kind of new and reinventing something, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. Dave is a show that multiple people have told me like, I feel like I haven't thought anything was funny in like five years. And Dave is like ridiculously funny. Oh, I'm it's sold. Brilliant. Yeah. I need some more humor yeah. in my life. I've become such a skeptic towards comedy, just yeah. having used to be in comedy. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. it's wild. Yeah, I need, almost, I need it. Dan, that is almost why I haven't watched it, because I, I think I am skeptical of like other people telling me something is, is really funny, just yeah. after my experience in I'll comedy. I'll put it this way. You're Everybody be bent over it. backwards to like get me to watch Parks and Rec. I fucking hate that show. I have <laughs> yeah, never found yeah, it funny. Yeah. I, and I'm so glad so many people find it funny, but yeah. it just does not work for me. Yeah. And anytime people are like, watch this one, and I've done it, and then I go, I, I don't get it. <laughs> I don't get it. Yeah. Man, I really want you guys to watch these, though, because then we can kind of reconvene and talk about it, because I don't really know that. anybody that's talked about it, or I, that's seen it, so I have nobody to talk about it. Oh, yeah. About it with. But... Yeah, please do. Or like watch a couple episodes and like text me and give me like a report back. Say, because... I'll do it just to have an excuse to have you back here. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, yeah. I, 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 I'll watch some Dave. I need a good laugh. Now yeah. when it, like the only thing that <laughs> this is going to sound so fucking level. cynical. The only thing left on the planet that makes me laugh to the point uh, is is when, when people unexpectedly vomit for real in a video. <laughs> Uh, when someone gets injured so bad that their shoes fly off in like you know YouTube videos, and then like uh, check it out with Doctor Steve Brule, those three things oh, yeah. are all I have left, and they're not making more Brule. Right, right. Oh, do you like? Do you guys like stuff where it's um, comedy where people are playing an exaggerated worst version of themselves? Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah, I do. Okay, that's what both of. The- I just realized the connection between the two shows is that's kind of what they both are. Yeah. It's both of them playing the like exaggerations of the worst versions of themselves. I mean, Um, I, I like that. And I also think like, that's like a thing that is definitely happening right now in a lot of like, uh, uh, different forms of storytelling and media, people kind of like trying to, um, explore their worst tendencies to, to almost like uh, eliminate them in some way or something, you know, to like call themselves out or something, you know? Yeah. Makes sense. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, I'm definitely interested in that. Like that, uh, I just rewatched Adaptation. Speaking of, uh, Charlie oh, I did uh, not, I did not watch that because our episode got delayed. Yeah, yeah, which, yeah, I think we are going to do an episode on eventually. But we like, will be, yeah. that is a movie that uh, that is that is what that's about, right? I mean, that is uh, kind of the specific thing that, that movie is about is is Kaufman investigating the sort of worst versions of him himself, you know, um, mm-hmm. and I, I think that is watching that movie all these years later after having like always loved that movie that is both the great thing and frustrating thing about that movie is that that is exclusively what that movie is about but i have always been fascinated by that idea of like an artist sort of portraying themselves in like a very bad light well to connect it to kaufman uh although by the end i feel utterly horrible for him but uh, I rewatched Being John Malkovich last week. Oh, yeah. And Malkovich is incredible in that. He yeah. plays himself as such a fucking fuck. <laughs> and, and, and it's so funny the way that he does it. But, like, by the end, it's, like, really some tremendous body horror. I don't want to, you know, like, how that ends is not good for Malkovich. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, but it, it is fun that, I don't know, I guess it connects to Kaufman and that he is always thinking about people at their worst. Yeah. I mean, Anomalisa is just a story about an extremely selfish man. 
You know, yeah, I haven't that's... seen that yet, actually, and I'm dying to. Oh, man, it's fantastic. Of his uh, directorial work, I think that's that's his finest hour. Yeah, I wish I liked Synecdoche more, but I haven't seen that. Uh, I rewatched, I rewatched that last week, too. Yeah, and I, I think I like Kaufman better directed by other people. Yeah. Because, like, I rewatched Synecdoche, and that's a, that's a fantastic movie, I think. It's got all these great parts. And as a whole, like, I get what he's going for, but it just doesn't quite come together for me in terms of that. And, like, I feel like, you know, he always works with Michelle Gondry and Spike Jones. Either one yeah. of them could have taken that home. Yeah. And he, like, didn't get it there. I, mean, I got so frustrated by that movie. I remember seeing the theater. I was oh, like, yeah. I cannot fucking wait for this to end. It's like... <laughs> I, I saw, I mean, I probably saw that a decade ago, also, yeah. like, when it came out. And I just remember thinking, like, you know, the, it, it, that movie feels like he made being John Malkovich. He made adaptation where a character where he plays, where basically he becomes a character in his own story that references yes. being John Malkovich. And then Synecdoche, he just combined those two ideas and within 30 minutes went straight up his own asshole into like an oblivion that I just like could not like ever actually work my way out of. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. the first time I watched it, I felt that way when I yeah. revisited it last week, it's, it's not as confusing and cryptic as it yeah. seemed, but uh, it is still, like I said, it's it's kind of messily done. Yeah. Um, uh, but I will say this. One of the things that that movie is worth revisiting for, and here's a sentence that I don't think anyone's ever said out loud and should say more. Samantha Morton oh. is fucking fantastic in that yeah. movie. Like, next level fantastic. And she's an actress I never think about. Uh, was she, hold on. Cause she, she's I, the, the one psychic that escapes with, uh, Tom Cruise and Minority Report. Right, right, yep. I just saw her in something recently. Hold on, I'm gonna look her up while you, while you she's, talk. Well, she's great, and she's just really, really exceptional in Synecdoche. Like, you know, everybody talks about it in terms of it being, uh, Hoffman's movie, but, uh, I give it to her. I think she runs away with that movie. She's not in it as much, but her character just, like... Ooh, it really works. And it, it has everything to do with her performance. She is great. I don't know what it was. I don't know. I'm trying to find a good list for her movies. I don't know. I saw her in something recently, and I was like, God damn, she fucking rocks. But I, well, I have no idea what it was. I watched a really cool old movie that I could recommend to you guys. Ooh, have you ever, it's, it's old in that it was 1996, which I guess <laughs> is, yeah, it's 24, so it's old. Bound? Oh, I've not seen that. That's the Wachowskis first movie? Early Wachowskis. They do a neo-noir kind of thing. It's a... I don't know why I said noir like that. Noir. Um, <laughs> and it's just Gina Gershon and Jennifer Tilly are these two women that start to form like a... Uh, you know, like a, a 1996 sex kind of sexy romance. You know, like yes. where it's... Ni- you know, it's like Verhoeven-y. Yeah. Um, and they decide that they're going to pull a con on Tilly's boyfriend, Joe Pantoliano. (laughs) And it is really, really fun. And just, there's some really cool directing in it, which I think with the Wachowskis is, is to be expected, but like in littler, less bombastic ways. Um, It's just a really solid, like watching it, I got strong. um, Oh crap. Why am I blanking out on the Coen's first movie? Blood Simple. Simple, I got like strong Blood Simple vibes in terms of like, Oh, this is a movie that is like a noir that just watches. It's just under two hours and at home you can pause and do all that kind of stuff. It was one of those movies that I never dipped out of because it just works on you. I highly recommend bound. I I think it was on HBO max. Oh, nice. Okay. I will watch that because I love Jennifer Tilly. Yeah, I think she's Jennifer great. Tilly fucking it. rocks. Yeah. She's so funny in it and weird, yeah. and 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 Gershon's great in it too. The two oh, of yeah, them I'm together, sure. they like crackle, but they're also like, I don't know. There's a humor to it. it. It's it's cool, man. I like that movie a lot. I have heard many good things about that movie. I would love to watch that. Yeah, Bound, and jo- and Joey Pants, man, Joey he's Pants. such a piece of shit in that movie, oh. and it is great to just watch him go through the ringer. It's awesome. Yeah, the, uh, man, super I... solid flick. I feel like I've been seeing Joey Pants in movies since I was a kid, and Joey Pants has been the same age in every movie I've ever seen him in. Yep. The hair just changes. Yeah. And even that, like, isn't, I don't think, an age thing. I think so they just do it different for... Yeah. Sometimes he's shaved, sometimes... Because he has a full head of hair in, in 
Bad Boys for Life, <laughs> <laughs> which is still one of the better movies I've seen this year. Um, yeah, he's got a full head of hair in that, yeah. Yeah, man. Uh, Ron, have you seen any new movies this year? I, I don't mean to say it like that. I'm saying it because I don't think anyone has seen it. It's like so hard to see new movies this year. Yeah, I, I find it hard to believe think. you haven't watched Bill and Ted. Yeah, I, I, I like I saw the new Bill and Ted movie that came out. The only uh, new movie I saw was um, King of Staten Island. Oh, oh you I know saw what? that. I did not see that. How was that movie? I liked it. I, for some reason, thought that I would like it more but yeah. i don't know not that it wasn't it wasn't good it just was it know, too needed... fucking long that was my <laughs> problem with it maybe yeah like yeah. midway through i was like oh we're we're in a pharmacy robbery what is happening in this movie <laughs> yeah i don't know i i guess i uh... i did like it though i'm a well, i'm a yeah. davidson uh davidson skeptic and i thought he was really good in it like really good I'm recently like kind of getting into because after I watched that movie and then I like watched some stand up, I was like, I fucking like this guy. Like, I yeah. like his his vibe. I mean, I think he's funny. Um, but before that, I kind of wasn't sure. And, yeah, uh, I liked it, but I can't say it was. You know, I like I'll see it again. But Bill Burr yeah. has a very extended role in it. Yeah, I saw like that. Bill Burr's a main character. Oh, and you know who else shows up? Um, oh shit, what's uh, his, he came out of Philly. Uh. Uh, oh, uh, Derek, I, Gaines. Derek Gaines, yeah. Derek I knew Gaines shows up yeah. in it, yeah. So that was kind of neat. That's yeah, cool. I liked that movie. It wasn't my favorite. Just yeah, too same, long, same. but man. Yeah, for sure. Comedies don't need to be over two hours. And this comedies, was over two hours. Comedies don't need to be over 90 minutes. Like, yeah. Comedy is best when it's fast and tight, you know? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, he is like... Apatos kind of like an auteur. <laughs> He's kind of like an auteur. So, like, I guess he gets a little lenience, but I yeah. don't know. I always run out of gas. But <sighs> to his credit, like I said, I went from a Davidson skeptic to I'm really enjoying him. So, Homework, yeah. You know. Truth. Round play has a tune. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> that keyword. Check that out on my new album coming <laughs> oh it's a cover album now <laughs> yeah it's all just that i mean what if that there. was what we were talking about the whole time <laughs> right what if that was like what we spent 25 all this hype like dude i love yeah. your release yeah. strategy yeah. man it's just like it's so People brilliant look the it up and it's just you. <laughs> yeah man hey yeah. man that's all cool shit <laughs> oh that's amazing so I'll yeah, try so, going on in here. Does it have an elephant noise? <laughs> awesome. I'll take it. <laughs> awesome. I'll take it. This is this is a yeah, this is a little preview of what's to come. Yeah, what are you uh, what have you been sampling on your keyboard? It sounds like you're sampling things. Yeah, so this is actually a sample of myself, a song from the first record. I took my voice from one part and pitched it up. So yeah. Oh yeah, that. I recognize that now. Yeah, this is a sample I downloaded on the internet. This there's a site called Looper Man where you can just get like all kinds of free loops, and this is just like a sax. <laughs> and I use that in a in a song on the new record. Um, <laughs> here you go. Here's an <laughs> little built-in ohm chant. Pretty good. Um, pretty good. Here we go. We got Alan Watts, where we saw. We don't we... have to. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to go on living. But it's a great idea. It's a great thing. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, just some. What is? Is 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 what is? is, is, is. <laughs> and now sit down again. <laughs> oh, and my favorite one, because of the state of the world right now and where we're at, is is like all we can do is live stream shows. Yeah. So. I, uh, we had to do a few and it got to a point where I, I just could never get comfortable with like playing into a camera. Yeah. So I downloaded a crowd sample <laughs> to be able to do between songs. Just, so it feels like a little bit. That's so funny. That's awesome. Dude, I, know exactly I can see how that would help though. Yeah. I, any, anytime we're doing the show, Dan and I both feel this way. It's like, we can't let ourselves think about anything. One of us has to be talking at all times. It's like, yes. it's that entertainer thing of like, there has to be something happening. We can't let there be like a dead moment. I can imagine playing in an empty room when there's just a camera on. So it's like, ostensibly there's an audience here, but they're not here to react to me or anything. Like that's gotta be so weird to just like tune between songs and stuff. Yeah, absolutely. I remember doing a stand-up comedy audition 
and it was for like Ugh. a corporate gig. And so it was in a fucking office, oh, and it was for terrible. two dudes. Yeah, that it was just two dudes that they weren't there to laugh; they were just there to hear my material. And so I had to go up, you know, just do all that stupid shit. And I mean, I got the job, but like that was one of the hardest, most you know, like we've all played for That's dead awesome. crowds, but yeah. this was a crowd designed to be dead. And oh man, it was so yeah. A little crowd noise in my ears would have would have worked wonders. Yeah, that's brutal. I can't imagine doing that. I'll never forget it. That's terrible. But it's a great dude. story. I yeah. mean, it is what it is. But I mean, we've all done shows for you know two people before, just in a different setting. I know. Anytime and it's somebody like, talks about sometimes you like, can make it work. Yeah. You know, like sometimes it works, and a lot of times it doesn't. Music has such a cop out too, because we can kind of get away with the lack of reaction. But for you guys, it's like. I can't even, it's a thousand times more difficult, I think, if you don't have that reaction. So I don't know how you do it. It's like, it gives me. I remember doing a set between (laughs) bands at one of your shows, Ron, and I ran into that trouble because it was a music crowd. And I was like, all right, I'm going to use some energy and get them. And it was like, oh, they all want to just chill on their drinks right now. And I listen. So I did what I could. fucking dream to try to like blend the two beautifully. And it's it's hard. It's hard. Sometimes it works. It can it, be I done. feel like it worked at Fergie's so much better, but Johnny Brenda's was like, yeah, it's too many people. It's too loud. It's too, um, you know, it's like the ticketed show thing. It's like people are very like one track minded, I guess, in retrospect. Yeah. They're like, I'm here to see the music. But part of me just like wish it, it feel like it works so well together. I wanted it to work so well. But I don't think there's like a, a formula to it. It's one of those things that like on a different night, it might have worked beautifully. Yeah. You yeah, know? Sure. It, it's just I, it, you never know. It's 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 a weird combo. Or for There's a so solo many... music act, might work better. Maybe. Yeah, maybe, yeah, yeah, maybe. I think Ron, that felt you... more like a like like concert minded. So it was yeah. like you know, like if I'm sitting there at a concert, I'm chatting with my buddy, we're rocking out to the music, we're having a couple drinks. When that ends, that's like break time for show, where you definitely, go, all right, let's take definitely. a piss, let's yeah. you know do you know, and then I think that's that's a tough thing to insert anything into. You're yeah. right. Yeah, you know, if somebody went up and was like, I'm going to do a quick little acoustic set, they probably would have been like, all right. Right. No, you know, no, no, I don't know no, if it's necessarily the mix. It was just a roll the dice. I mean, this yeah, isn't yeah. exactly what you're talking about, but are you familiar with uh, uh, Todd Glass, Rob? Do you know that comedian? Yeah, I vaguely. I mean, I'm not like, I haven't yeah. seen a lot of stuff, but I know of him. He has a, a special on Netflix. I think it's Make Happy. I think it's that one where he has a band with him on stage the whole time. And so it's not exactly what you're talking about. It's not like a band performing their own music. You know what I mean? But it is... Uh, it, it he com- makes it like a stage show, yeah. Yeah, it's like, it's comedy done with me. And it's not And it's not even that, like, Mitch Hedberg thing of like, oh, there's a little light jazz in the background of my comedy. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, it's literally like entire bits start playing out where the band is involved with how jokes work and go and flow. And they're, you know, if they interrupt him, that's actually the bit that he's being interrupted by the band. And then he can tell them they're lousy. And, you know, like, it's very fun and funny. And it's one of the better... It, I feel like it's one of the better marriages I've seen of live music and live right, comedy. Right, right. It, it actually works together, I think, when they are in service of each other. Right, right, right. That makes Do you sense. know what I mean? I want to write that down. I want to, I want to check that out. It's, it's, it's a great special, actually. It's really funny. He's so funny. Yeah, I, I haven't watched that one. But I mean, I've seen him do stand up and he always brought like a disc with him that he would tell the, the person running the room, like, play track 24. And then he'd do a bit. Yeah, with his, yeah. It's like I can see it definitely working. Dude, I'm gonna have to run here in a minute, unfortunately. That's fine, dude. We can all yeah, good. I think right we're all thing. I gotta yeah. go drive an hour. Um, dude, it's all good. That's uh, exciting. So you're all over the internet, just at Ron Gallo, pretty much, right? Like if yeah, all, Ron the, Gallo will find all you. the social media is just my name, rongallomusic.com. All the shit, Google search, you know, maybe something will come up. <laughs> but, uh, and uh, you've been doing like live shows on Facebook and stuff, which has been really fun. I've watched a couple of those. Yeah, just like random pop-ups when I'm at home and I'm like, I just need some sort of connection. Yeah. And just go live and no one gives a shit and it's cool. <laughs> it's pretty good. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. It's fine. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so check out, it's currently called Easter Island, but just look up Ron on uh, Spotify and he's got music yeah. coming out. Uh, yeah. And then uh, you said the album's going to be called Piecemeal uh, in uh, February? Yeah, February 12th. So. Nice. Awesome. That was my, my cat's birthday growing up. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Why? That's why we picked that date. There you yeah. go. Also, uh, Abraham Lincoln's birthday. Yeah. 
Uh, well, oh, you can, no shit. Let's, yeah. we'll, uh, well, stick with us for two seconds here, Ron, and we'll wrap this yeah, up. Um, course, you can find us ever on the internet at I Like Two Movie. It's numeric two. Uh, Facebook, uh, and Twitter, and I Like Two Movie at gmail.com if you want to email us. Uh, let us know what you think of the show. Tell us what movies you want us to watch and talk about. And uh, you can find me on uh, Twitter at Philadelphia. I'm on letterbox.com at Philadelphia. And uh, I write for cinema 76com Check me out over there. Yes, indeed. Thank you, everybody, for putting up with this strange schedule we've had for the last couple of weeks. We've I had know. some tech issues and some weird shit. So thank you for sticking through with that. Um, but we'll be coming at you pretty regularly from here on out. Uh, I am at Dan Scully on all of the things. Check out uh, cinema76.com, findy.com. And um, also, I'll drop a plug for Hot Property, my uh, comedy-ish funny podcast. It's just me and my buddy Steve shooting the shit. So uh, if you want to listen to that, we mostly talk about snacks. So uh, <laughs> definitely uh, check out Hot Property. Nice. Uh, here's how we always wrap this up. My name is Garrett Smith, and I like to movie movie. My name is Dan Scully, and I like to movie movie. I love you guys. <laughs> and we all know that you like to movie movie because we, we like to movie. movie.